manage and I go to dev q1 I'm gonna put the message free in there and I'm gonna hit create and here we go as always I'm gonna start the journey with spring initializer and uh, selecting Kotlin and greater groovy I'm gonna fill in some details I'm gonna choose JDK 17 but it, not that it really makes any difference and then one thing I'm gonna add for sure is uh, Spring Boot Actuator and uh, to hit that endpoint we may want to add uh, web as well that's it for now really let's download this project once we imported the project in um, our ID all it's left to do for us is uh, just try to run it and see if that works for this we are going to use the greater wrapper provided with the Spring Boot repository so I'm just going to type gradlew boot run and this should build my project and start an empty Spring Boot app there we go our application is actually running and it's all fine so let's start by adding the MQ dependencies I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to go into build gradle and uh, in the dependency I'm going to add um, a dependency implementation and that is going to be com.ibm.mq and this is the one we're after so let's try to reimport that I think we may be able to go up to version 3 I believe it should be 303 perfect so we have our dependencies what we can do we can actually go back to our main application and uh, we are gonna annotate this application with enable JMS which is a spring annotation so all we are left to do now is actually create our listener and add the configuration for it so we're going to create a new Kotlin class and we're going to call it uh, message listener message listener that's great so our message listener I'm just going to annotate it with the component annotation and then in the message listener we are going to create uh, a, a function that receives the, the message so we are going to call it fun receive and then we're gonna have a message of type message from the IBM in queue or more like it Java X JMS sorry is more generic where you're gonna use the JMS listener annotation to annotate this math this function and we're gonna provide the destination of type we're gonna leave it empty for now so JMS listener okay sorry we need to add the body um, and now JMS listener is imported what we need is to have a text message of type text message from JMS and then we're gonna say message as text message to cast it and we're gonna print it print it like so so we could save message received and then we're gonna output the message which in Kotlin we can just do like so and that's great so what else are we missing we need to configure our queue so let's go to application properties in application properties what we have typically is this type of properties so these are the default properties from the MQ container if you remember we can start up an MQ docker container and the default properties for a dev queue on the dev admin SVR con channel um, using queue manager qm1 these are the default username and password and we can use this type of queue we are specifying spring jms pub subdomain to false 
because we are just doing a, a point to point connection. We are not doing a publisher subscriber here, but we can change that later if we wanted to. So destination here, we are going to say dev q one. And um, I believe all we need to do is start a Docker container, which um, it's um, easier to do, I believe, if we create a, a Docker compose file. So I'm going to create a Docker compose YAML and I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to grab one of the Docker compose uh, files that I have lying around. So as you can see, I'm going to start an MQ server with ibm.com MQ version 9.1.5, but you can put the version you want. And we're going to export the, expose the port 1414 and 9443. Um, if you remember 9443 is the web console, which you're going to hit in a minute. And um, the rest is just like MQ manager name QM1. So what we can do is docker compose up. We have the container running now. Uh, let's open the terminal and do our Gradle wrapper, Gradle W um, boot run. Okay, this has failed. Why has it failed? Unresolved JMS. Okay, so um, let's go back to our Spring Boot um, JMS 303. Perhaps this has an imported after all. Um, oh yeah, of course. So it's, it's no more Java X, but now this is called Jakarta. Is, so all we need to do is replace this and uh, it looks a lot happier. Let's try to build it. So what we need to do is boot run. Okay, for now we have a happy connection. So how do we test that everything is working? Go into the IBM MQ console at localhost 9443 slash IBM MQ slash console. And here we're going to be asked with the credentials. Remember the credentials are always the default ones. I haven't changed them. So I'm just going to grab those ones, admin and password. And now I'm going to go to manage dev q1. The queue is empty. So I believe if I put a message in here now, we should see something printing in here. Let's try that. I'm going to say hello in queue and create hello in queue yes we received the message there is a lot of gibberish in here and um, this could be because we are printing the full object so in theory what we could do in here is like the text we only want the text so let's try to rerun it and in, uh, in the other terminal as you can see the Docker container for IBM and Q is still running. I haven't changed anything. Um, so great. Let's put another message. Say hello again. That's a lot better. So we only have the text this time. That's all we wanted to print. Spring Actuator. If you remember, why did I bother in adding Actuator? I think it's quite important because, for example, we have our application running on port 8080 now, if you remember. And because I've added Actuator, I'm able to hit this endpoint that says uh, localhost 8080 slash Actuator slash health and the status is up. If you wanted to deploy this to a cloud type of environment, typically you have to give a health endpoint. So Actuator is great. In this case, you see, we didn't need to write any type of code for that. And what I can do is can I can demonstrate how this works. So if I now stop the Docker container, Spring Boot is going to be unhappy all of a sudden. It's going to throw all sorts of exceptions, saying problem with this connection has occurred. So what we can do is going back to the health endpoint. If we refresh, you see it now, it says down. So this is really important because it uh, contains, it. Uh, um, describes the status of the container if we wanted to run this application in a container 
or this application in um, in the cloud essentially the thing i wanted to show you is how you make rest request to mq yes you can actually make rest api request to mq server as of version 9.1 as you can see you can post a message get a message list get a specific message and of course you need to log in first but let me show you how we can do this through a postman for example so i still have my application running and the endpoint that i need to hit is the same as the mq console followed by internal ibm and q q manager qm1 because that's the one that we configured q slash dev q1 because that's where i want to put the message forward slash forward slash messages so uh, the body is going to be my message which is uh, like a json request as you can see so i'm going to say hi from rest api and dev queue let's just put just rest api and uh, what we can do is authorize this with the basic authentication uh, basic authentication yes and then username admin and password as, as you can as you've seen throughout the the video so let's hit that endpoint and uh, yes that is a 200 okay response and effectively in the logs we should see that response somewhere yeah here you can see message received hi from rest api so this is to show you that you don't need to go through the ibm and q console click and do things like that so why this is useful for many reasons you may want to test something over and over again or do an end-to-end -end test or just local testing so this is incredibly useful in my opinion you could build of course um, a full-fledged rest api ibm and q client without having to use spring boot and perhaps we're gonna try that as a future video but for now i just wanted to leave you with this and uh, please remember to stay tuned because i'm gonna show you how we can test um, message listeners in the next videos. So make sure to subscribe. See you next time.